So at the old rack, I know it's a mess, don't even get me started, but working on the old security camera server. So you can see, um, it's still spiking. Seems to be if I record more than four cameras at any given time, it has a conniption. Um, it does record it, but like windows will stall out. Uh, GUI becomes unresponsive, you know, fun stuff like that. Not necessarily critical, but I know if I add one more camera to record, that whole thing is going to collapse. So here's the server. Actually, it's two servers. On the right side, it's our main server that houses VMs, QuickBooks, stuff like that. On the left is the security camera computer server. Um, I was looking to add a graphics card to it. The graphics card would have to be so small, it'd be probably pointless. It, like I, By small, I mean physical location. There's not a whole lot of room in there for a graphics card. It's not really meant for that. So I figure, hey, I'll pull out my old computer, swap the hard drive in it, and see what it does. I mean, this thing was a powerhouse in the day. It was absolutely horrible. As soon as I loaded, as soon as Windows loaded the security software, um, it locked up. This thing has like half the process logical processors. I want to say it's uh, eight logical processors, where that this server is actually sixteen logical processors. See. And to top it off, the video cards are AMD, not Intel, so I can't see if CUDA is any help. However, I do have more than one computer around here. I, some may say too many. I say that's a relative term. Anyway, this is my old video editor. I say old because, well, this behemoth with its AMD Threadripper is a much better video editor. So this has been degraded to just watching YouTube, but I figured I will put the software on here and see how it goes. And well, it actually runs pretty good. Unfortunately, we're not comparing apples to apples here. This thing has 24 logical cores and it's at three, I think max 3.3 gigahertz. Um, it also does also have a video card which is running at 45%, which I find a bit odd because I read online that uh, Blue Iris does not utilize the video card except with CUDA, and these are AMD video cards, and nobody online lies. Okay, so maybe it was an older version and a newer version actually can take advantage of graphical cards. Either way, I think what I should do is look for a processor motherboard combo that has this processor or better. Hey, a card just went by. I think my best course of action is to look for a motherboard and processor combo that's either this or better and put a graphics card in it in a larger case than what I am currently using for my server. And another one bites the dust. Yeah, I broke a... Well, this time it's not an end mill. I broke a drill bit. This is the second drill bit I broke. And... I don't know why, but I think I know why. I don't have the part here, but I was drilling some aluminum and I broke two drill bits into it. First time it was way too fast. Second time it was about two to three inches per minute. Um, chip breaking operation, so it was going in and out, in and out. However, I have noticed that the tramming is off on this CN on the CNC mail. So I have a feeling that that's why it broke. It was going in too deep at an angle and, and, and it didn't like it. Either way, I'm going to check this thing out one of these days. I'm going to check for tram and I'm going to check for run out. I thought I checked for run out before, but I might not have. Probably because I didn't want to know. I mean, it operates. If I just don't use small drill bits, I could probably be fine. Or deep, deep small drilling might just be off the table for this machine. So we're here in the printer shed. I don't know what to call it. Um, over the summer, my large 3D printer failed um, quite spectacularly. I don't even know what happened. Um, yeah. I'm not even dealing with that anymore. This is the Super Volcano nozzle. 
Um, I think they might have discontinued it because this is the second one I bought and it was pretty hard to find. Seemed a little, rather expensive and a lot of the nozzles were out of stock. So I think I'm going to get rid of it. No, actually I am replacing it. That's what this video is about. I, I, I don't know me sometimes. Anyway, this thing's also so long it had issues because it would kind of wiggle back and forth. It's not very secure in here. And also, if this hit something, uh, it wasn't pretty. Things would bend. I, I just, it, it works. Uh, I, I'm, I'm switching to something new. This is, what is this? Hang on. Okay, I forget the name of the nozzle. It's made by Slice Engineering. That's the only information on here. Listen, if you want your product called out, put your name on it. We don't always remember. Okay, I don't usually remember. This is a me thing, I know. Anyway, the reason I went with this is I really like the heat break design. Um, extremely isolates the cold section with the hot end. Uh, supposedly you can get a lot of filament through this. So we'll see. But this entire thing is different, so I have to make a new mount to go onto the printer. The hot end mount that I made before, this guy, um, 3D printed. It did work, it worked pretty well um, down here near the, the heater block. It did start to melt, obviously. I always wanted to make this out of metal, just never had the time or ability. But I have the CNC mill now. In case you're wondering, yes, this is the thing that I broke two drill bits in. One drill bit's down there, one's up there, and then I gave up. Um, oddly enough, those holes drilled fine. So, um,. I'm thinking it's a depth thing, which would go along with the idea that it's a tramming issue. But that's not what this is about! So the two holes are for fans. Um, this slot is to cool the print. So a fan goes here, blows in, and then shoots on down to cool the prints. This one, right here, goes through this hole to cool the print head. Print head goes on just like so. Very... Tolerances are very tight. Um, I wanted the tip pretty high up in case it gets struck. I don't think it's very strong. So if I can reduce impact as much as possible, well, I want it. That's what I wanted. This could lead to issues down the road, so we'll see. It is below, but it is just barely below. But that is what I wanted, so that, that was perfect. Now you might not be able to see it, but this printer is bit built on top of a Creality... Cre... Cre these people, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce their name. Um, I forget the model of the printer, but it was based on one of those. Basically, the black stuff is what was is left of the printer. I probably should have just built my own. Uh, I got the controls down here. But I am keeping a lot of the mechanics, which is th these wheelies, which I actually like. They're pretty sturdy. They go into the extrusion. This, I think it's called 80-20-80-30 uh, extruded aluminum channels. Uh, nuts go into these slots, screws go in, and you can basically tighten something down on any position, anywhere on that slot. Um, these wheels go into that groove or slot. And, I mean, it, it's pretty rigid. Doesn't really wiggle much. It actually works surprisingly well. Don't get me wrong, I hate this printer. Um, it's too big. For that mechanism. Um, I got some linear slides. I was working on designing my own 3D printer. I realized that I would have to drill up seam number of holes and then kind of drop the project. The CNC mill does give me this opportunity to start making a new one, but I have zero time to do so. I don't even have time to work on this printer, which is why it's been broken since summer. But back to the part that I'm making. As you know, the the motor, extruder motor, gearbox sits up there, that's how it's clamped. I got a BL touch that kind of bolts in up there. Then I got the dollies or wheels poking out the back, which I wasn't too fond of, but I didn't know how else to do it. I couldn't suck it in, and it was a, basically a net zero gain if I tried to recess all these. Because this one has to stay protruded because that's like a wiggle bushing. You rotate this bushing to adjust the tension between these, this wheel and these two wheels. Now, if you're any knowledgeable about printers, you might be wondering, where the heck is the belt supposed to attach? Well, I can't think of everything. Yeah, this belt wraps around the motor, goes around that, 
Um, goes around the pulley, loops back, and is supposed to tie to the print head. Oh, I forgot to make a point to tie the belt to. So I'm thinking I make, might make a bar that goes kind of around that. So I have to I have to tie it down here somewhere. Maybe like in the hold on. You know, if people actually watch these videos, I will get a better lens. That is a promise because it annoys me more than annoys you. However, I'm stuck with this lens, so let me try to explain this while keeping the cameras back as far as possible so you can actually see stuff. So the bar goes in between these wheels. The belt is actually kind of right here. So you kind of want to tie basically right to the center of this wheel. So like right here, which is easy. I could just tap and drill that. That's no problem. The issue is over here because I have the BL touch snuck in right back there. Now I want to keep that there because it's fairly in line with the uh, print, the nozzle, but it is protected from messes like that. I've also had to put, replace my fa fair share of tips because uh, the print will lift a little and catch this little plastic nub and destroy it, which is really annoying. So I am definitely keeping it back here behind this guard, basically this wall, this shield, this, um, I ran out of synonyms. Sorry, if lighting looks a bit off, it's because this is a shiny thing and um, the light just hates me today. Anyway, I'm having an idea. Maybe if I make like a little box that goes around this, two, two uh, like uh, number six screws to hold it in place and then a stud up here to hold the belt, that might work. That might not be too bad. And then I can just go back here with a bolt, drill and tap it right into this aluminum because it's chunky back here we're good back here make a little bridge right over there that could work off to the CAD well I'm going to the CAD you're just gonna see um, whatever I'm doing next I don't know I don't I don't feel like the, the servers loud I don't I don't feel like showing you my CAD work okay I'm sorry I didn't mean to yell I was just saying you know why aren't you working that is the third time I replaced that fan. First off, why does that fan run all the time? That should be the first question. Second, why am I keep replacing you? Work. So if you're old to my channel, you know, verse of new, you'll know I made a uh, powder coating of it, a little chest type. Well, I had to, I still have it. I had to powder coat something long. I did not want to run the generator for the big oven because it's just a small little cylinder. So, um, that's not better, is it? This is an Instagram. I just stood the oven up on its side. I had to put latches on it because this door is spraying open. I was not ready for that. As you can see, that fits perfectly. And it worked absolutely crappily. Uh, bottom was cold, top was hot. There is no air circulation. Uh, I don't mind doing this, having it lay down or flip up. I kind of like it. It does give me a bit of flexibility. So I might look into, which I've been wanting to do for years, add a fan to this thing to get some convection oven type stuff going. But this is done and I can take it out. Ah! And yes, you did hear correctly, this is a hydraulic ram for the snow plow. I powder coated it because it looked ugly. Uh, I don't think I helped it much. I, I, I don't know. At least it won't rust. Now I think about it, adding a fan's gonna take a while, so what I might do is throw a switch on that upper element. That way I can just get it to, to up the temperature, shut that switch off, and that way the only element that runs is the bottom one, and that should generate some natural convection to get the part up to the appropriate temperature. That's my bit of a hack fix, but I think it will work. So I got some hydraulic lines I need the powder coat. Well, I don't need to, I want to, but I kind of need to for the plow, and I need to get that done soon because uh, snows are coming. I probably still have a couple of months, but you know, I, I don't want to wait till the last minute. So here's a piston that I rebuilt already. Yes, I did powder coat the head too. Here's the rod of the other one that I'm working on. Uh, I wrapped a, I think it was like a four inch duct around it. I, four inch duct, it, it split down the middle, you have to push it together. So I just kind of rolled it over and covered the shaft. 
for sandblasting and powder coating. Seemed to work out well. I didn't see any scra scratches. Well, more scratches than were already in there. These are old. Covering off, the uh, rod looks, well, perfectly fine. It but a little dusty, but perfectly fine. There's a white mark there, but it comes right off. I don't know what that's from. Maybe uh, the galvanized kind of drifted over during heating. I don't know. But what I'm really checking is make sure this wiper is okay. Uh, I had some difficulties with the first piston. I completely wiped out a wiper. Uh, slightly bent this one. But it looks like the damage is not really noticeable in its uh, workability. Okay, that's better. You can kind of see right there. Um, I smashed it a little and you can kind of notice it in the wiper where it goes from round to kind of flat back to round. But because it's pushed in, the rod pushes it back out and it seems perfectly fine. It's just to clean the rod before it goes into the primary seal. So we should be good. Like I said, actually I don't know if I said that, that might have been another take. Hmm, this is the problem when you do multiple takes because you don't talk right. Anyway, I'll rebuild these I'll rebuild this piston later. I'm not too sure when. Not tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. Maybe Monday. I don't know. I need to get these done before snow gets here. That's really what I'm concerned about. Like, It'll be my luck. We'll have 24 inches in December, which has never happened, but it'll just be my luck. Belt's supposed to uh, go onto here, and that's supposed to prevent it from flying off. I did a trace to cut this off, and I forgot to make the trace an offset, and it cut off the thing that I needed. That was a waste of 20 minutes. I'm gonna go pop that off, see if it works. If it does, I'm gonna recut it. Well, I was hoping to get the last cuts, but um, I had to go get a snack. What the? Okay, that was weird. The door got stuck. Anyway, I think third time's the charm. This little uh, base here, I, I tried to cut it off on this one, and obviously the uh, it ripped it out. So I redid it with the base still intact, and that gave it enough rigidity that it, well, it didn't didn't get messed up. Everything looks good on it. I uh, just have to deburr the back because of the material that was left. Probably round this out a bit. Drill two holes and this part will be done. Well, there goes that theory. I thought this thing was out of tramp, but um, it was actually perfect the first time I tested. I might have hit one of the uh, dials. But it's, it's pretty good in both directions, so. I'm not entirely sure why I keep breaking drill bits. It might actually be that holder, because that, that holder's killed two drill bits. Uh, I'll have to look into that. <laughs>